Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. So welcome back to another episode of How Leaders Behave. And I'm here, as always, with my friend uh, and colleague, Peter Agnew. And today we're going to be talking about the results-based focus on commanding leaders from the model that we've already discussed. So how have you been, Peter? Yeah, great, Mark. Uh, looking forward to this one. This is a really high-energy sort of uh, driven sort of style in some ways, isn't it, that we're about to unpack? And it's interesting because these guys are very self-promoting. Yeah. You meet quite a lot of these people in leadership positions. Yeah, do you find? I, yeah, I do. And I think um, when someone gets this style, particularly in a very high level corporate area, they're sort of doing those high fives with each other. Yeah, we're a commanding leader. Yes. Uh, and it's sort of got that sort of brand reputation in some ways, this leadership style. But um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I think it's um, it certainly pulls no punches this episode, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So uh, probably worthwhile just having a refresher of the model. So the Eight dimensions of leadership model. Do you want to talk to that, Peter? Yeah. So we're, again, we're we're unpacking our eight dimensions of leadership model. Uh, the commanding piece of uh, piece of pie that uh, sits uh, within this model is uh, just up in the eleven to twelve o'clock uh, mark. Eleven o'clock. Uh, and we're unpacking three behaviours within this commanding leadership style that are really prevalent to, to the commanding leader. Things like showing confidence, taking charge, focusing on results and so forth. Uh, some of those terms that we really hear with leadership, aren't they? And what, yeah, what's interesting is that, you know, you, you know, showing confidence, taking charge, and that, you know, the, the maxim of a commanding leader, you know, typically wouldn't be a good style anymore. You know, command and, was it command and control? Command and control, control which yeah, is not a very good old. Thing. But actually, yeah. you know, when you want someone to take charge and show confidence and get the results done, it's, it's really necessary. So yeah, a, I, I agree, Mark. And I think, um, as, as, as always, we, we're unpacking uh, this uh, model through our eight series. Um, and... Each one of these behaviours is an important aspect of leadership. Do you have to be competent in all of them? Well, I think uh, you don't have to be the expert in all of them, but, but I think that level of competence is going to be important. And I think for this one, most often people sort of say, well, what does a leader do? And they do take charge, they do show confidence. Yep. Uh, they're usually out there in front in most instances or seem to be the person out there in front. So these behaviours for the commanding leader will be really important in, in a leadership perspective. But I guess if you are, this episode is for you and you are a commanding leader, obviously that's why you're watching this episode episode. It's not about being a one-dimensional leader, it's about being an eight-dimensional leader. Yeah. So uh, for those people who've done the DISC model, obviously you're going to be up in that D piece. Uh, so that obviously correlates with the, the, the commanding leader and that's where the, the two products obviously sit together because the DISC model sits behind the, uh, the eight dimensions. Yeah, and, th and this is really that sort of um, faster pace uh, north side of the DISC model. And very over to the to the left hand side or, or the the west section of the disc model, so it will be that little bit more assessing of the environment and uh, seeing the environment as unfavourable. Yeah. Uh, so it may, may not be that warm, softly, uh, uh, friendly, collaborative approach that we see here. More, maybe a bit more result driven. Yeah, a bit more cool, a bit more sceptical. Yeah. A bit yeah, more, a bit more detaching, not not very affiliative. So let's have a look at the commanding leader at its at their best. At their best, they are. Powerful, decisive leaders who enlist others to work quickly towards ambitious goals, and that's a great for att attribute. Yeah, and I think power is a really uh, key word that we'll sort of see through this episode, Mark. I think um, uh, these leaders will want to be in charge in some ways, and they want to do take very fast, decisive action. Uh, so as we go through, we'll see some of the, the underlining behaviours that this leader is really fantastic and good at, but some of the underlining psychological reasons of why they may not, uh, what, why might challenge them within their particular leadership style as well. So at their worst, I mean, you know, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Forceful, egotistical leaders who push others at the expense of morale. Yeah, so we could sort of see the, the byproduct of how this uh, leadership style is going to turn out at its worst, can't we? Yeah. It's probably that sort of uh, getting the results, driving forward and getting to the destination, but sort of looking back over their shoulder, they'll see a trail of bodies sometimes. Uh, and that's sort of the danger with this leadership style. It does get results. It really pushes forward and has, has a fantastic effort of getting results. But there's that sort of tipping point there where I think when we're coaching people, we sort of say they're getting results, they're doing it all right, 
but the damage that sometimes happens with the team and the people is something that uh, other leaders and people around them worry about. Yeah, the, the antennae for the people piece is not strong. Yeah, uh, And definitely. I think that's the bit that uh, you know, we're going to spend a little bit of time unpacking now is that the, the, the challenge for the commanding leader really sits in this um, the pushing at the expense of the morale piece. Yeah, rather and, bringing and I, th- I think the real lessons these leaders will have is from that inclusive lead as we go through the episode. How do I really bring those people along with me, still get the results I need, uh, which is what work- workplaces and teams come together for. They come together for results. But how does everyone sort of feel okay about the results and they've sort of got that <coughs> buy-in as well? And I find when I'm working with commanding leaders, they sort of sit back and say, well, yeah, that's, that's who you need to be. You need yeah. to be powerful. Powerful is good. You yeah. need to be yep. decisive yep. and you need to be forceful. And strong and, you, and all and of that stuff. And you need to push stuff. people. Yeah. yeah. Except yep. there's about 50% of, 50 or more percent of the population that that is really ineffective for yeah. them. Yeah. And I think we've talked about likability being such an important part of leadership because when you do stumble and you fall, and we all do that as leaders, we make mistakes, uh, we have errors in judgment. Uh, things don't go completely right. We need people around us to support us in those times. We need people to stick up for us. We need people to actually give us a bit of support. We need people to speak well of us. Uh, all of those sorts of things are really important attri- attributes of the people around us. And sometimes that emotional collateral is something that the commanding leader may miss if if they've really pushed too far sometimes. There was a book I was reading over the weekend and it talks about one of the two greatest human traits, humility and vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, and that might be something these guys could learn. Definitely, about. absolutely. And I think when we, as we unpack uh, the commanding leader, that vulnerability piece is a real danger for them. They sometimes see that as a soft and weak yes. sort of section, and has no place in leadership. So, how we get the commanding leader just to open up and be a little bit more vulnerable, move into some of those softer spaces, I think will be our challenge in this episode. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, people don't know how much you care. So, people don't worry about how much you know until they know that you care. You care, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, let's have a look at the commanding leader. You want to take us. Yeah, so goals, uh, bottom line results and victory. Victory is there very much much on purpose. It is about the spoils of a win in some ways. So the goal will be to get results, uh, but it will also be sometimes to to have victory. And that might be at the cost of others where they may underconsider the... uh, the input of others in some ways. So if, if someone's going to be, um, if, it matter, if, if it's a win for me and a lose for you, this leadership style probably won't worry too much about that. In fact, that's almost preferable, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And as we go through, I think it's that, you know, I'm happy to show that I'm right. But there's going to be that little occasion there where these leaders will actually be happy to prove others wrong as well. So that will be part of it. So the, the judges, are, the judges, others piece by others' ability to achieve results. So effectively, what we're saying there is, unless you're like them, yeah, they're pretty much going to be writing you off. A competent person gets things done yeah. is how they that's will it. view the world. Yep. Uh, they'll see people through results and that's what they'll be uh, judging them by as well. We've also got influencing others by certainly the assertiveness, sometimes bordering on the level of aggressiveness uh, and then right through to, to competition and, and insistence in some ways. So leaders in this will influence them quite strongly, uh, sometimes a little bit overpowering but some people will like that ability for the leader to be very self-assured and to be pushing forward. And that, that insistence in serv- and, 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 and insistence and assertiveness piece is there. They're, they're very seldom do they doubt their own vision, do they? Yeah. They, they yeah. totally are right. And I, I think uh, it's that subjective realism that will come up uh, yeah. amongst very shortly yeah. where it, it, my view uh, is, is my view. I've formed it and I'm pretty sure that it's right. I'm pretty confident in my own views in some ways. Uh, and sometimes any exploring that deviates from my own view yeah. will be treated with a little bit of competition or drive <clears> in some ways. We've got so, the overusers, definitely. So a little bit about forcefulness and blunt, bluntness there. I suppose diplomacy and tact has a big part in leadership and that bluntness can sort of sometimes bring these leaders a little bit undone. Yeah, I think that, you know, the the need for, you know, the gentle side, the compassion side, the uh, winning people over is seen as weakness. And so they tend to go the exact opposite way and they are forceful and blunt and it's ironically not an effective tool for them. Yeah. yeah. There will be the sometimes where that, that forcefulness may be. I read an article over the weekend um, from Harvard Business Review um, 
on the difference between good leaders and great leaders. Uh, good leaders have drive and purpose. Uh, they have a very clear direction that's good. High morals, ethical, all of those sorts of things. But great leaders have that, but also drive. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of attributes in this leadership style that are where great leaders come into play. They have that uh, ability to focus on direction. Ethical, moral standards are, are really high as well but they've also got that drive that makes them from good to great. And some of Jim Collins' work is sometimes that good is the enemy of great. Yep. So we're, we're sometimes looking for really how do we have great leaders. Part of this style will actually be part of that. It will be the drive and forcefulness that will add value to the workplace. Uh, for us, I think the challenge is how do we get in, in 30 minutes these leaders to soften that approach Absolutely. sometimes as well. And, and I guess that the under pressure piece becomes impatient and demanding yeah. sort of sits with how they view other people as well. Because if you're not if you're not somebody who can achieve results, then they become very impatient with people yeah. and very demanding of pe those people. Yeah, and we know for some of our... our more to continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.